Yo, what's up, everyone? It's your boy Jack. Oh, this is Go. You either know or you don't. So let's get straight into this because, unfortunately, and yet again, the fandom might need a little bit of saving. Now, I understand a lot of the frustration the fandom is feeling given the recent events of Black Clover, but my inner fanboy in Faith and Tabata has not given up. And for those of you that have stuck with me throughout uh, the year and some change that I've been on YouTube, you know that I've not believed this is the actual Lucifer for several reasons. But unfortunately, in this video, we are not talking about Belphegor whatsoever. But before we get into anything, there's going to be a lot of spoiler content in this. So if you don't want to be spoiled, come back on Sunday or tomorrow when the unofficials drop. I'll give you about five seconds to do so. And we're in this. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping first, okay? So I see a lot of people on Twitter talking about how Tabata's fumbling, how Lucifer was a letdown villain, and blah, blah, blah. I get it. But I think we're jumping ahead of ourselves yet again. We have to remember, we have special interviews from Tabata, and he's very intentional with his words and the way he likes to portray the story. Number one. Tabata, when questioned on how long he would like the series to run, was specifically stated to say that he wants it to be as long-running as a series like Naruto, which is 600 plus chapters long. So, we have a long ways to go. If anything, we're halfway there. Now, if we had an endgame villain right now, it would make zero sense. So that's one thing to consider. Number two. There are six other devils within the clipbot. Why would you as a reader want this to be the real deal? It's a setup for disappointment if you ask me personally. And that's why I've never wanted to be on board with this being Lucifer, like the actual Satan himself. And instead, some kind of fraudulent being or a being using a name to better describe his capacity in hell. Now, can this arc be saved with Lucifero defeated? Absolutely. And that's why we're here. I'm here to talk about the devil, Belial. We've talked about achieving the state of Belial, but not the actual devil himself. See, Belial was born alongside Lucifer and Lore, perceived as two angels, and he's known as the angel of lawlessness or the worthless one or one without God. Belial actually exists in two places within the underworld on Crowley's Tree of Knowledge. One is within the realm of the Samael, which is the seal that opened with the Dramalek currently, and in the outer tree in the second veil before Satan as one part to a dark triune god. Most importantly, Belial is specifically stated to be the original king of hell, predating Lucifer and all the others. This being was specifically out of God's darkness, which is why Belial seems to be the only demon that seems to oppose God directly, even when compared to Lucifer, who is really out to destroy God's creations and not so much God himself. Now, Belial is also said to be tactful and the most evil of all demons, but also brutish in nature. Now, let's get into some things we let slip by without any question before we get into some more specifics about Belial. Number one, Lucifero in two hosts at once. We've seen him with Dante and Morris at the same time, and we never questioned really why that was able to happen. And I think a lot of the fandom went with, well, this is the king of demons. He can do whatever he wants. While a more educated response that I've heard from people like W.K. Minato uh, were saying that he could have up to three hosts because in Tande's Inferno, Lucifer has three faces with traitors in his mouth, and I think that makes the most sense out of all of them. However, we have not seen a third host. That is still up in the air, but still a very plausible idea. Another reason is the fact that Lucifer seems to have dual personalities and appearances to suit them as well. This fits the aspect of Belial being two beings at the same time. While we have one, who's very brutish and can only say things like, oh, worthless, pointless, stupid, uh, and be extremely angry and violent, and then the other where he acknowledges them and then calmly tells them that he would kill everyone they know and love. This 
perfectly describes Belial. Why is it that the second gate seemed to be the key to his manifestation specifically? Like, why did we allow that to slip without any question? Four, there's a clear disdain and lack of respect for Lucifer by literally all the other devils seen in the advent, with the exception of Beelzebub, who just really hasn't said much at all. And then five, why would Lilith and Nama be specifically worried about a devil that wouldn't be out for another five to six more days? And this is with a pre-modified clip pod. So there was no plan for a speedy descent for this particular devil if this was the actual Lucifer. So let's just go through the list. Lucifero in two hosts at once is easily explained by Belial being perceived as two angels. I, it, it can't get any simpler than that. I, I think I could leave it at that and be comfortable with myself without having a typical convoluted five-hour discussion uh, that I typically tend to have on this channel. Uh, two, we talked about the dual personalities and appearances and how it suits Belial and how he's perceived. And then three, the second gate being the actual key to him manifesting doesn't make too much sense. But here is the sense that I can put into it. Within the second seal, a drama that comes out. But on Crowley's clip bot, a drama lock doesn't rule Samael alone. In fact, Belial rules over a drama lock. So it would make sense that, if anything, the second gate was sped up so that Belial could descend with a drama like faster. But we'll get into the second part because I think Morris, instead of modifying the clip out itself and bringing out the last seal up to the second seal, did something else. But like I said, we will get into that in just a little bit. But we can't just let this escape by us because if the second seal was needed, that means that devil specifically belonged to the second seal. You can't be the king of demons and be restricted to that one thing. It doesn't make too much sense. Now, let's go to the clear disdain and lack of respect for Lucifer by all the other devils within his advent. Um, and I, I do want to start out with Lilith and Nama. They wanted to kill and just toy with Dante uh, when they came out, knowing that he was Lucifero's host. Now, why would they be worried about how Lucifero would respond to them messing with his toy if this guy is really five to six days away from actual manifestation? And we could chalk this up to them being cocky and thinking, well, we can hold up the advent for, you know, long enough. Uh, but even still, Lilith and Nama really didn't care about the whole advent. They were going to decimate the entire thing when they were fighting Asta. There wasn't really any contextual evidence, at least not that I perceived, that Lucifero was going to manifest much later in, into the advent. It seemed like he was coming pretty soon. And they knew that. And I think it's explained away by this devil being Belial and ruling that realm with Adramalad. There are some other points I want to touch on. There are, there are certain things with Lucifero that I, I started to pick up on towards last chapter. And it's why do things always seem to go wrong for Lucifero? It seems that fate is almost toying with him just like it toys with Asta purposely. So let's look at the series of events. Like, Lucifero tried to manifest via Leobe, who just so happened to have been yeeted and stumbled upon the only human that could possibly intercept the manifestation. And all she had to do was hug him and suck the mana out of him, and he would have to try again. Doomed to spend the rest of his days in the underworld until 15 plus years later, when two products of Lacita are there yet again to stop his manifestation in another weird twist of fate. Again, it seems like fate seems to be targeting certain beings within this series. The biggest fact that Lucifero has been through more hosts than Vonica has had disciples. And that's a lot. 
So again, why don't things seem to be going right for Lucifero? Now I reference a lot of books and encyclopedias on this channel. And one of my favorite things, one of my favorite sources is a book called Paradise Lost by John Milton. Now, this is not uh, strictly lore. However, this is an interpretation of the lore that has been given to us. Uh, and I find it to be not only entertaining, but pretty informative as far as conveying uh, what each devil is there for and how they fell and so on. So I will never let go of the fact that Lucifero slash Dante are in their bio and their magic is in quotes and it's gravity. And it has Asta freaking out saying like, we're, we're fighting this guy and this isn't even his real magic. Like, what is it? So I'm here to present to you with a, a proposition here. What if it really isn't gravity? But gravity is the best way we can explain it right now. It was the best way that the characters within the series can explain this. But instead, his magic is more of a concept. And this concept I'd like to introduce is called Murphy's Law. And this works both for him and against him. Now, for those who are not familiar with Murphy's Law, it is essentially summed up with the saying that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So back to the points of Lucifero having a hard time finding a host that can get his manifestation completed seems to be a huge issue. And again, this would work for him as well, it does, as well as it does against him. We've seen his manifestation get completely crumbled at least three times, four times now. He just can't get it right. And then we see... When Yuno is challenging Lucifero with Noct and Yami alongside Asta, we see that he was dumbed down to two choices, left or right. But then, out of a 6,000 IQ move that no one saw coming, there was a third option. And when it seemed that they had the drop on him, his wings all of a sudden became arms, which impaled Yami and Noct. Now, this is Murphy's Law working for Lucifero, where that was the worst outcome possible in that situation. But the reason I bring up Murphy's Law is because in the book Paradise, Law, Paradise Lost, John Milton specifically states that Belial is an expert wielder at Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law does have some laws that apply with gravity. So again, this could be the best description of his power while not actually being his power. Now, to the bigger point here, didn't Moore specifically say that he modified the tree so that he could manifest early? Now, if he were in the last seal, then there would be four or five devils that would have come out now. Those devils would have been Adramalek, Lucifuge Rofocal, Beelzebub, Satan, and Moloch. However, those devils did not come out, so this implies that either Belial's home was within the second realm or something else happened. So what exactly could Morris have modified then? The part that he could have modified is the part of Belial that exists in the outer tree. Now we've gone over the three veils before Satan. These are the triune dark gods. I believe it's possible that Lucifero was able to tell Morris to drag his higher being from outside of the tree through the clip out to where his lower self is, which is with Adramalek in the Samael. So while he was manifesting, the part that he was really waiting on was his higher self, which were the brunt of his power would be so that he could fully manifest and become king again. So what I'm implying here is that we are actually seeing a demon king or the demon king, but not in full form. Of course, he has said he's not in full form. However, I believe this was close to 100% his lower self while he was waiting on the rest of his higher self as stated before. So he is a far cry from who he was or who he is as his higher self. Just like I've talked about with Megicula being the higher form of Lilith, 
And to me, I think this does fit because when we think about Lilith and Nama and Asta fighting them, there was no emphasis on a devil core for either of them. And there still seems to be no emphasis on a devil core for Lucifero. And I think that's because these are lower forms that he was fighting against, while in terms of Megicula, this would be a higher form, thus the true form of Megicula. And the true form of this devil Lucifero, or Belial in this case, exists much later and farther into the tree outside into the realm of chaos and darkness and void. As a last touch to kind of sum this all up, I do want to point out that, yes, I do understand that his name is Lucifero and not Belial, but here's what we have to understand, is that names are a very fickle thing when it comes to demonic beings. In fact, in some lore, it is specifically stated that most of these demons fell because they changed their name to something that did not describe them accurately whatsoever to garner praise and power. Thus, they were cast out of heaven. But these are never true names. None of the devils within the underworld seem to have actual true names. Instead, they have titles. Now, there are exceptions like Lilith and Nama. However, these are not even fallen angels. They are more so fallen humans and lore. So they would be the exception. For the rest, they are titles, which is why they have very descriptive uh, meanings as far as the name goes. Like Adramalek means Magnificent King. My point being is that etymology is a really, really important aspect as far as this series and lore goes, and I think it should be paid attention to. The rest of this, I would like for you to kind of think about, and I think it's just very important to see that this really most likely is not the end of this series or at least this is not lucifer who would be the end game villain and i think it would add so much more depth to the story and much more to look forward to to be quite honest because if this is the power of a second gate devil think about what they have to look forward to the exponential growth from the first gate Lil Thanama, to the second was extremely vast so from second to third is going to be even worse. So think about the last seal and all the devils that will come out with it. We have to understand that the very last devils should be cosmic beings. But I'm going to leave it there. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and listening to all the crazy shit I had to say. Thank you for the support and love. I should be coming at you with another video pretty soon to talk about the tree specifically because I finally found the source I was looking for and it only took about a year. So I hope you guys are ready for some uh, true to lore things that Tabata has thrown in with this new source that I have. So I will see you guys in the next video. Again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to. But I'll see you in the next video. This has been Jack Ghost to Go. You either know or you don't. So let me come down all of a sudden I told you that we keep it buzzing ha!